Starting off today's news video with this. Homemade cold brew coffee. You guys know I love a cold brew and I've managed to figure it out. One gram of coffee for every eight grams of water. Let it sit in the fridge for two days before you then push it down, stirring it kind of every 12 hours. After two days, push the thing down, get yourself some filter paper, pour it in over some ice, fill it up to halfway and then fill the rest with water. It is honestly a taste sensation, like the Podium Orange Dream Pop. Anyway, team, welcome to the news. I'm sharing my coffee knowledge with you to start. It's not like, it's not vast knowledge. I don't have vast coffee knowledge, but it's enough. And it tastes incredible, so I'm gonna tell you about it. <laughs> 21 days until the CrossFit Games starts. <laughs> Three weeks. Ah! Oh! Brilliant. Like this, Danielle Brandon's favorite artist and one of mine, Morgan Wallen, his song last night became the first song in history to reach one billion streams in under a year. Brilliant. Country music. It's one of those songs, you know. Anyway, moving on. Sam Dancer this week gave us a shoulder exercise that we may not be doing. He says it's one of the best shoulder conditioning exercises and that a lot of shoulder exercises are limited in duration due to the shoulder muscles, how fast they fatigue. And so he likes to accumulate up to 30 minutes on the bike doing this. I mean, if he can do it and he does it and he's that jacked, maybe we should too. Just getting ready for all those Morgan Wallen Friday nights. This week in the CrossFit space, we did see a lot of confusion around grip length. After the CrossFit Games put out the athlete support gear post, what they can and can't wear, there were some obvious mistakes or things that literally couldn't physically happen and it was shared around the space uh, with a few memes and that. And Dallin Pepper just kind of showed it off best. Here, here are my grips, clearly shorter than my fingers. <laughs> so like, what are we supposed to do? It's one of those things, isn't it? You know, when you look at that post, you, you understand it. it the, the grip can't go past the finger, but the problem is you've used the wrong photo on the right hand side. Because even if it's one of the shortest grips, it's gonna go past your finger when you wrap it over the top of the bar. Dave Castro cleared it up. The grip has to, um, when it's strapped to your wrist, it cannot go further than your longest finger. And that is the end of that story. Momentary panic for a lot of athletes. They're like, damn, I need to get some scissors and cut this off somehow. What's the procedure, everyone? What's the procedure? Stay Moving on, the next thing that I saw this week that I thought was interesting and I thought a CrossFitter would do that. This right here is a, a like a Google Maps of the furthest distance you can walk on land without going over water, like basically across the world. It's 22,387 kilometers long and it will take you 4,492 hours to walk, which is 187 continual days, but obviously you can break it up. Don't have to do it unbroken. I'm talking to you, Dave at the box. There isn't a Dave at the box that always wants to go and broken. I don't know what I'm talking about. But I saw it and I thought, you know what? A CrossFitter might attempt that one day. It's probably quite dangerous going through some of those areas, but imagine being the first person to do that. I reckon that would be pretty wild. What's also wild is uh, this photo that Dan Bailey shared this week. Look at him there. Before there were Bluetooth headphones and CrossFit shoes and apparently barber shops. Dan Bailey before he ate Dan Bailey. What's it like being down Bailey's arm? I get asked it a lot. Yeah. Well, I uh, need a lot of oxygen. And I'm, I'm big. I need a lot of blood. I'm bigger than the average human's leg, actually. Yeah, I've been measured before. It's exciting. That might be a moment in my YouTube career where I've realised that I might be losing the plot. Dan Bailey's bicep. Now, moving on, in this week's probably most polarizing news regarding CrossFit and the CrossFit Games is that we are getting cuts this year at the CrossFit Games. This is CrossFit Games. They're always controversial. You always have the people that are pro-cut and against the cuts. I actually saw this comment when I was going through everything and it's it, it, something I kind of agree with. The only cuts really necessary are in the team division. There should only be 10 teams to begin with. Sam Dancer said that and um, maybe not 10, but like I feel like 40 is way too many. When you're there as a spectator, it's a lot of time. Um, 
but also the, that depth of field tests them all. What are your opinions? Put it down below. But anyway, back to the cuts. Morning Chalk have put a nice diagram together. Thursday and Friday, there'll be 40 individuals, but after Friday, they'll cut the male and female field by 10 and the teams by eight. Then the remaining 30 will compete for the whole of Saturday and 10 will be removed at the end of Saturday from both the teams and the individuals until there's 20 left. And only that 20 will compete on the Sunday. Now, just a couple of months ago, these cuts would have looked very different. Dave Castro actually took to YouTube in one of his latest episodes and said that the cuts, they're all to do with him. The usual, the usual suspect, he's back. He's done it again, you he's done it again. That is a fact. With a bit of polarizing, which is always good for sport because it gets people talking about it. This year, the team was planning on having very minimal cuts um, towards the end of the weekend. And I came in and I said, no, we're gonna, we're gonna go a little more aggressive, which isn't that aggressive, but we're gonna have the cuts after Friday and then the cuts after Saturday. And then uh, on Sunday, Sunday, we have the final field. And so at this point, I completely own the decision. I completely, if I wouldn't have been put back into this role right before um, a month and a half before the games, a month before the games, it would have, the cut schedule would have looked very differently. I'm gonna cut the long YouTube video short of what he said, but basically he said that after the two full days, Thursday and Friday, the athletes will have done about six events, which is almost a regional's worth of events. So the cut is kind of justified. And then further, another day, three, four more events on Saturday, another cut is justified. If you're that far down the leaderboard, you probably won't win it. He's probably not lying. He gave some reasons for the cuts. One being the fans, long days of watching, less heats means more enjoyable to the point precise watching. And if you've got loads of heats, you've got long days with no breaks. Also, he said for the viewers online, it's better. You know, if you're tuning in for an event, you're not tuning in for two hours to watch one event. You tuning in for two heats, maybe. He also put it down to staff and judges, obviously being a long weekend, and then being volunteers, you know, they'll get tired towards the end of the weekend so they can be better at their job with less going on. And then looking at it from a corporate standpoint, the vendors, you know, Vendor Village and stuff like that, if there's stuff going on all day with loads of heats, people aren't walking around Vendor Village and the vendors won't get the most out of it, neither will the sponsors, so I get that point. And then also, it means that he can be more creative with events with less athletes. Which again, I get. So to, to me, you know what? I feel like these cuts are good. He said something on his podcast, which like, I was like, that's how they should have been put. And he like, listen. Side note, maybe this is also a messaging issue in terms of we should have never called it cuts, but uh, even phrase it as opportunities to advance. So there's, there's stages where, uh, where the athletes advance on to the next stage. So it's kind of like, you know when you say cuts, there has there's a negative connotation to it. Opportunities to progress, I feel like, you know, if we have this included for the rest of the CrossFit Games going forward, you know you come into the CrossFit Games for at least two days to fight, and then you have the opportunity to progress on to later parts of it. And I can see that fully working. But let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Uh, I always love to read them. Hey, babe, have a look at this. Is that, is that Jason Kalipa? Unbelievable. What a mammoth of a man. Yeah. Can't believe it, 2008 CrossFit Games champ, eh? Careful of that bench. Oh yeah. We've been running here in Rome. So basically as you run, you look for opportunities to get in some upper body, some lower body, some squats, some lunges, some jumps. Production quality is getting better, eh? Look at that, that was like a skit. <laughs> now, but this week, Jason Kalipa is touring around Europe doing a few seminars and whatnot, and uh, he's been doing some urban running. For me, when I saw the video, I'm like, it's a, it's a cool idea, it's great fitness. What you should be doing, but imagine seeing it. You know, like, being a CrossFit Games fan, looking out your window in Rome to a 250 pound unit of a human being jumping over the bench or air squatting on your road. You'd be like, oh, Dad. <laughs> 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 And then finally, a couple of bits to finish off today's video. Apparently, Jeffrey Adler has a big wrench. Definitely good for fixing pipes, among many other things. On the latest Coffee Pods and Wads podcast, Patrick Vellner realizes that he's old. Now looking around and being like, so I'm 33 this year at the games. Bless Jason Smith. We got him as the true elder statesman this year at the games. But I think it's him, Will Morad, and me are the three oldest guys at the games now. And I, I don't feel like that, but... It happens quicker than you think. You look around and suddenly, you know, first you're a rookie, you get to do that once, and then you feel like you're in this sort of sophomore era for a little bit. 
And then suddenly I look around and I'm like, oh, I'm one of the most veteran people in this group. Like, when did that happen? But instead of it hindering him, it gives him that little bit more fire and motivation. Here's why. At this point in my career, I'm actually really enjoying just beating up on the young guys. <laughs> like, I think it's just, to me, that's a quiet motivator for me every time I see all this stuff about hyping up all the young guys. And I'm like, all right, we'll see. Roman Krennikov has taken to Instagram recently and posted a strict press 220 pounds for three, which is incredibly strong. But the caption underneath, send me location, CrossFit Games. I'm gonna do my bit here for the community and whatnot to get Roman to the games. Uh, starts on the Thursday, Roman, at the Alliant Energy Center, Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, kind of shocked that he didn't know that already, but here we are. And then finally, this is probably the funniest clip I've seen in a very, 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 very long time of like YouTube and CrossFit content. Emma McQuaid, the female Irish legend in the CrossFit space. Uh, just wait until the end of this video. It's gonna be the closing clip so you have like the good endorphins as you leave. So stick around. So on that note, uh, if you wanna join Whoop, the link is now up and running. You get a free month and a free Whoop 4.0 so you can try it. Win-win situation. Best wearable on the planet. For tracking, for performance. Thank you for sponsoring the episode. Hustlemade.com if you wanna support Jazz and I. It really like really does mean the world to us. And if you get some of the gear, you're an absolute legend. Become part of the legend tribe, you know, every time I see someone in it, I'm like, and on that note, if no one's told you today, you're an absolute legend. Enjoy this closing clip and uh, smash that like button. If you did enjoy this episode, it really does help. And we'll catch you in the next one. This is so good. So good. <laughs> you see me at the games? I'm not sad. I'm just warming up. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>